In England, to be thrown into the clink means to be thrown into jail or prison. But the phrase gets its name from a horrifically brutal prison that existed just off of the south bank of the River Thames in London. The clink was a prison in which was possibly one of the oldest men's prisons in the country and was probably also the oldest women's prison too. Its name probably comes from the sound of the metal of the prisoner's chains rattling inside of the jail. However, today we look at medieval England's most brutal prison. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. In the early 12th century, the brother of King Stephen, Henry of Blois, became the Bishop of Winchester. He was a man who was incredibly powerful, and he lived in a palace known as Winchester Palace, next to the River Thames. He established an area of land, known as the Liberty of the Bishop of Winchester, in which he oversaw the land, laws and people who lived there. It later became known as the Liberty of the Clink, taking its name from the historic prison. However, the area of the South Bank began to become a site of much debauchery and seedy behaviour, with it littered with brothels, pubs and other illicit organisations. The prison did exist within the grounds of the palace, one for men and one for women. It's also believed that the name Clink came from the sound the blacksmith's hammer made as he closed the iron chains worn around the wrists or ankles of the prisoners. Inside of this early prison, many local criminals were kept to await their trials. The Bishop of Winchester was a very important member of the King's government, and he regularly would try defendants accused of heresy and other crimes. It housed many criminals including drunken vagrants, vagabonds, thieves, pickpockets and more. But throughout the clink's history, it did house some very famous people. Inside of the prison, the jailers or guards were very poorly paid. They would try to maximise their income, and they relied on wealthy prisoners to pay the jailers for more lenient treatment. They even managed to hire out cells, beds, bedding, candles and much more to prisoners who could afford it. They also helped to provide other food and drink, and they accepted money for loosening the chains. Prisoners were even allowed outside to beg and work, but this also cost. The clink throughout its time as a prison did see a number of rebellions and prison riots. During the Peasants' Revolt, in which the peasants were rebelling against the taxes and laws imposed upon them, it was attacked, and they did try to destroy the prison. Subsequent damage emerged during this, and Jack Cade's rebellion the century later forced the authorities to rebuild the prison, with it becoming a two-storey male prison. This stood on the site of the Clink Museum which is present today. Like most prisons during this time, it was also a site of torture. The museum today demonstrates a large amount of torture devices and also documents the story of many of the men and women who were housed in the Clink. Some of the most famous prisoners include John Rogers, a man who became a martyr after he developed the Matthew Bible, the translation of the Bible in English. He was the first English Protestant executed by Bloody Mary I and was held at the clink for a period of time. He was then burned at the stake in Smithfield. Bishop John Hooper, who was also involved in publishing the Bible, was also burned at the stake, but he too was kept in the clink. Thomas Wyatt the Younger was also in prison here for rebelling against Mary I. But during the religious turmoil of the English Reformation during the Tudor period, many suspected heretics were held at the clink, with the prison becoming rather overcrowded. Antony Tyrrell was a Jesuit, accused of plotting to assassinate Elizabeth I, and he implicated some other men in the Babington plot. Anne Launder was a lady who was imprisoned inside of the clink for around five years, and she even died there. John Lowe and John Adams were two men, held there, who were later hanged, drawn and quartered for their involvement in plots against Elizabeth I. Henry Barrow and John Greenwood, who founded the Puritan Church in some respects, were also held at the clink before they were hung at Tyburn. Their congregation eventually sailed to America on the Mayflower. John Gerard was another Jesuit held there, and he himself is most famous for being a man who managed to escape the Tower of London, despite being tortured. It was also for other crimes that people were imprisoned in the clink. One man was found to have been trespassing, another was incarcerated for refusing to pay for the dying of four yards of cloth, and many other prisoners were debtors who owed money to local businesses. One man, William Houghton, who allegedly was known to Shakespeare, and he was a playwright and an actor, was also imprisoned for debts. 
John Duke, a famous actor of the time, was also locked up for refusing to pay £8 of debt. Death was common at the clink, with the prisoners kept in poor conditions, and also disease was known to spread quite easily throughout the prison. But as time went on, it continued to be a site where heretics and religious criminals were kept, even after the Tudor period. It was later burned down in 1780, when rioters released all of the prisoners. It was never rebuilt, but today only a small amount of stonework of Winchester Palace and the passage Clink Street stand, showing where the prison once stood, and inside of the museum is a small piece of the original prison wall. So the Clink was one of the most brutal prisons in history, and many who found themselves inside of the prison never made their way out. Others also found themselves transferred to the Tower of London for further imprisonment and even torture, but the clink was a place you definitely did not want to end up inside of. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.